Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 35. In this tutorial we are going to add in a sound effect for the collision of our minor jump scare and we're also going to add in the, well start the puzzle at least, of our little eye that we have. Don't forget click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel and if you've enjoyed this series so far please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of having a sound play when this lands on the ground is actually very simple. A lot of people think that that kind of stuff is very complicated in terms of programming, but it honestly isn't. So we are going to attach a script to this object now, which will have a sound play. So I'm going to use a sound effect that I already have um, within here. So probably this bang sound, but I may modify it. You can use a completely different sound if you want to. So for now, I'm going to duplicate that bang sound that is in the effects. So let's change that to collide sound. And obviously it can be called anything you want it to. I want to change the pitch to two just to make it a little bit different it's going to be a bit higher pitch obviously so let's create that script let's go to our scripts folder into environment right click create c sharp script and we'll call this collide cup let's open that up in visual studio so the way it's going to be done is we just need to have one single variable which is going to be the audio sound itself so public audio source and we'll have this as impact fx semicolon so the way it'll be done is inside a void on collision enter method so void on collision enter does not need to be private and you can also change this variable here if you want you can keep it collision if you want to you can name it i don't know drive you can name it wall i don't know whatever but probably something relative to what we're doing here i'm going to leave it as collision what we need to do here is an if statement if collision and remember if you've changed it there you need to change it here as well dot relative velocity dot magnitude now we need to determine when we want a sound to play if we have this very very low chances are it will play as soon as we start the scene. If we have it one or above, then that's probably about right. But if we have it kind of like 10 or something, it's going to have to do a lot of impact before it makes any sound. So for now, for testing purposes, let's just have this as one. Close bracket, open curly bracket. And in here, we have impact effects dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon, and save. And honestly, it is as simple as that. So, well, I say it's as simple as that. Fingers crossed it works, it should do. So all we need to do is attach that script to our flying object. So drag and drop. And let's attach the sound effect, which is gonna be that collide sound. And let's press play and let's try this out. Okay, so far so good that sound hasn't played. So it should make a collision sound. What is going on? Oh shoot. So it should make a collision sound as soon as it hits the ground. Yeah, that's okay. So what we could do is change that to maybe 0.75 F and save. And let's, I don't know, let's change our sphere a little bit as well. Let's have it in with just a little more and see if we can get a different effect to occur. So, like I said in the last tutorial, it's all about the effects of being able to do that. Just change that sphere and yeah, you'll see what happens. So let's see what we get now. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. So you just need to play around with that magnitude setting and we at least have a sound now when it lands on the ground. So I'm happy with that. 
So I'll put this script on the website as I always do. Uh, if you have any problems, you can head over there, go to Downloads and Assets, Survival Horror, and get it from there. So where do we go from here? Well, I want to add in a puzzle now involving that eye that you remember we have on the main menu. So we're going to have half of an eye that you can pick up over here. So I'm going to take this table. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, let's rotate it as well. And we're just going to place an eye on it. Now, we already have the eye in here. There's a whole eye. But what I want to do is kind of split it into two. So we pick up half of the eye here and the other half somewhere down here when we've built up that area. So for now, I'm going to go game object, 3D object, and cube. And let's kind of make this a bit small. So we need to make it a lot thinner. Let's have 0.05. In fact, that's still probably too thick. 0.01. And let's decrease the size on there to probably 0.5. Yeah, that should do. Maybe rotate it a little bit. So now I want to attach an eye texture to there. And I've already cut out the eye. You could probably just take this eye and do anything you kind of want with it. Um, but basically all I've done is just take the eye, split it in half, left and right. Um, I'm probably not going to put this on the website because you can still use this eye and obviously modify it yourself. It, it's, it was just a quick way of me doing this. And all I'm really going to do is just put uh, left eye onto there and we can see it perfect there. Uh, let's add a normal map on there as well. So hold control, press D and let's change I left one to underscore. N. Again, this is all something that you don't necessarily have to do. It's just me you know, doing a couple of different things and seeing how it looks. So let's attach that to our material. The normal map. That's okay. I'm happy with that. And let's rename this to uh, left eye. Obj, short for object. What I am thinking though is the way it looks right now, it looks like it's the right eye just because of the way we're going to approach it as a person. So maybe we should rotate it that way, maybe. Uh, let's add a very uh, small amount of light to it. So let's possibly bring it this way. There we go. OK, that should be relatively decent. I guess we could always add more light to it if you want to. Lighting is so important, as I've said many times, and it's something that you could probably work out however you want to. So I might reduce the range on that to just in fact, three. So it's just very minorly on the eye. So I'm going to save the scene. So basically, we have the eye there. We can see it. We should be able to see it when we walk in. Yep, we're probably going to be distracted by this little jump scare, but we should still be able to see it. So we want to do basically what we've done previously, for example, with the key over here. And if we go and search in our hierarchy for the key, and let's have a look. There we are. So key pickup script. Now, if we click that key pickup there, in the environment, it's taken straight to it. So let's hold control, press D on that script, and let's rename this to left eye pick up. Now there's no point retyping all of this script when we can basically just use this script again. So let's change the class name to the same as the script name. So left eye pick up. If I can spell it, there we go. So a couple of things we need to change here. Basically, pick up key. Let's change this to pick up left eye. And if we scroll down, there's not much more that we need to change here. Only things we do is this right here. So we've got game object, the key. Let's change this to the left eye. And down here, it's highlighted saying that doesn't exist. So we just need to change it there as well. The left eye. And let's save that script. So at this point, we have basically got half of our puzzle in place, even though half of the puzzle is pretty obvious. It's right there. 
So the second half, picking up the right side of the eye, obviously that comes a little bit later in this series when we're going to create something a little further on. But for now, all we want to do is be able to pick up that eye. So let's attach the uh, script to that left eye object onto there. And let's add in those variables. Let's see if I can remember. So we need the canvas. Uh, but I cannot see, so let's... There it is. So, the canvas, expand. So there we are. So, let's try again. Action key is... I think it's action display, isn't it? Action text is action text. Extra cross is there. And the left eye is going to be the object itself, which technically I know we don't really need to have there because we could just reference the object itself. But for all intents and purposes, let's try this out and see if we have the desired effect. So I know throughout this series there are little bugs here and there. It's because a lot of the time I kind of rush through this just to get onto the next thing. But I always get questions. Why didn't you fix this? Why didn't you do that? Now is probably a good time to kind of mention that a lot of the stuff that you see here, you should be taking a lot more time to do rather than what I do. I show you how to do it, you spend the time doing it. Cool. And now, pick up left eye. Awesome. I'm happy with how that goes now. So, where do we go from here? What I want to do in the next tutorial is kind of flash up on screen and say, you know, you got the left eye kind of faded a little bit, kind of, you know, in a, in a style of maybe Resident Evil-ish. Um, so I want to do that. And I think we might start designing the next area. I'm thinking of having like a stalking kind of enemy where as soon as you enter an area, that enemy constantly follows you. Again, maybe a bit like Resident Evil, but that's where we're going to go from the next tutorial. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.